Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. This time, I'm going to discuss another topic which is included in the most essential learning competencies that was suggested by the DepEd curriculum experts. Our topic is all about nucleosynthesis, meaning you are putting up together. This is a thermonuclear reaction involving heat that produces a new chemical element from another element. So one of the classification of nucleosynthesis is the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. So according to this theory, the temperature in the early universe was very high, that all matter were fully ionized. So this is characterized by the series of reactions during nucleosynthesis. But before we go through the nucleosynthesis reaction, let's have first familiarize the symbol of some subatomic particles and elements. So let's have the symbol of proton. The symbol of neutron. So this is proton, neutron. The symbol of electron. Negative 1, 0, E. The symbol of positron. It's positive 1, E, e and 0. Another is hydrogen or this hydrogen or the so-called protium. It has one atomic number and one atomic mass. Another is the isotopes of hydrogen, which is deuterium. Deo means two. So this is an isotope of hydrogen with two atomic mass. Another one, isotope with three atomic mass, is the tritium. Aside from that, we have also the alpha. A, two, and four. Atomic number is two and the atomic mass is four. Aside from that, alpha, and then next to alpha is the beta. Beta, the symbol of beta is positive one, or if it is negative, we can say Beta negative, if it is positive, we can say beta positive. So beta, the symbol is B, and the atomic mass is zero, and the atomic number is negative one, beta negative, or the beta positive if it is positive. Now let's move on to the series of chemical reactions during Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Number one the reaction is that protons and neutrons fuse to form deuterium. So when we are going to write it in a symbol, Number one chemical reaction is that protons and neutrons fuse to form 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 0, 1. So this symbol is deuterium, right? Next reaction. Deuterium collided with other protons producing helium-3. So deuterium collided going to add with other protons we're going to produce a chemical element or an element which is helium 3 so remember helium is always atomic number of 2 next chemical reactions or process during big bang nucleosynthesis deuterium deuterium fused with neutrons to produce tritium so deuterium fused with neutrons. 2 plus 1, 3. 1 plus 0, 1. We can produce tritium. So when deuterium and neutron collided, tritium is being produced. Next, chemical reaction. Tritium and two deuterium nuclei collided and formed lithium-7. So tritium, the symbol of tritium, collided with two deuterium. Symbol of deuterium will produce an element of 
2 times 2, 4, plus 3, 7. 2 times 1, 2, plus 1, 3. So, an element with an atomic number of 3 is lithium. So, if tritium and 2 deuterium collided, lithium 7 is being produced. And for the last chemical reaction during Big Bang nucleosynthesis, helium-3 collided with neutrons forming helium-4. So helium-3, the symbol of helium-3, collided with neutrons. Neutrons, this is the symbol of neutrons, will produce an element of 3 plus 1, 4, 2 plus 0, 2. So an element with an atomic mass of 2 is helium. Helium-4 is being produced. So let's read again. Proton collided with neutron will produce deuterium. Deuterium collided with proton will produce helium-3. Deuterium collided or fused with neutron will produce tritium. Tritium because it has atomic mass of 3. Tritium collided with 2 deuterium. This is deuterium will produce lithium-7 and helium-3 collided with neutrons will produce helium-4. So this is the chemical reactions happens during Big Bang nucleosynthesis that produces light elements such as helium, lithium, and hydrogen, of course. Right after the Big Bang, protons, neutrons combine together and form light elements, as we can say, hydrogen, helium, in the process of people nucleosynthesis, right? Other elements, such as lithium and beryllium, were also produced during this process. Remember that. But the question is, how does star formation or stellar evolution relate to nucleosynthesis? Remember, a star generates its energy by fusing light nuclei to form heavier nucleus. So in this process, mass is converted to energy in accordance with the Einstein equation. So what is the Einstein's equation? It says energy is converted into mass, or mass is converted into energy. In the production of nuclear energy, a star synthesizes different elements. So let's have the hydrogen burning phase. Okay, so the fusion of four hydrogen nuclei into a helium nucleus is commonly referred to as the hydrogen burning phase. So when we have four hydrogen so the fusion of four hydrogen nuclei into a helium nucleus commonly referred as the hydrogen burning phase. So, the hydrogen burning phase supplies energy of the stars. So, this phase is classified into two types, the proton-to-proton -proton cycle and the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. Let's discuss them one by one. So, the proton-to-proton -proton cycle is a process by which the average star gets its, their energy to convert hydrogen into helium. So, it starts with... Proton and neutron fused to form deuterium. Proton and neutron fused to form deuterium. Okay, so when one proton collides with deuterium, so when one proton collides with one deuterium, Helium-3 is being produced or formed. Helium-3 collided with other proton. Helium-3 collided with other proton will produce what kind of element? 3 plus 1, 4, 2 plus 1, 3. It's helium-4. So this is the summary of how proton and proton chain reaction happen. For more massive stars or bigger stars, the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle is more favorable for converting hydrogen to helium. It is a catalytic reaction wherein carbon initiates the reaction. Carbon-12. So, in the sequence of reactions, 
This process produces carbon-12 which can participate in another cycle or and the cycle goes on and on. So let's have it one by one. So this is how carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle happens. From carbon-12, it will fuse with proton. With proton. And it will form 12 plus 1, it's 13. 6 plus 1, it's 7. An element with an atomic number of 7 is nitrogen. So nitrogen-13 is being produced. From nitrogen-13, Um, undergoes beta decay. When a nitrogen-14 undergoes beta decay, it will produce 13 plus 0 is 13. 7 plus negative 1 is 6. It produces carbon-13. From carbon-13, from carbon-13, it captures another proton. Last, are fusing with another proton, it will produce 13 plus 1, 14, 6 plus 1, 7. Nitrogen 14 is being produced. From nitrogen 14, will fuse or captures proton. It will produce 15 plus 14 plus 1 is 15. 7 plus 1 is 8. An atomic, what element that has an atomic mass or atomic, I mean atomic number 8? It's oxygen. So oxygen, oxygen 15 is being produced when nitrogen 14 and other protons collide. So from oxygen 15 undergoes beta decay, another beta decay. Will produce what kind of element? 15 plus 0, it's 15. 8 plus negative 1, it's 7. Nitrogen 15, again, is, an, is produced. So when nitrogen 15 fused with proton and gives off helium 4, so aside from carbon, helium 4 is produced. Okay, so let's take a look if it is balanced. 15 plus 1, 16. 12 plus 4, 16. Balance, right? 7 plus 1, 8. 2 plus 6, 8. So this is the series of reactions how helium and carbon-12 is being produced in the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. So it's called carbon-nitrogen cycle. So this occurs mostly in more massive or bigger stars. Remember that. During stellar evolution, when a red giant leaves the main sequence star, it will undergo the process of tri-alpha process. This is how helium-4 is converted into carbon. Okay, so the tri-alpha process begins when two helium-4 fused to form 4 plus 4, 8. 2 plus 2, 4. So an element with an atomic number of 4 is beryllium. Then stable beryllium is being produced. And if this nucleus collides with another helium-4, if beryllium-A collided with another helium-4, so 8 plus 4, 12, 4 plus 2, 6. So carbon 12 is being produced. Energy released is carried off by the motion of the nucleus and a gamma ray. Okay, so that's how tri alpha process happens. When a star accumulates more mass and continues to glow into a red supergiant, Alpha particle fusion happens at its core and creates more heavy elements until iron is being produced. This is called the alpha ladder process. This, this is how it happens. So with helium-4 
collide with carbon 12. It will produce 12 plus 4, 16, 6 plus 2, 8. Oxygen 8 is being produced. And when oxygen 16 fused again with helium 4, it will produce 16 plus 4, 20, 8 plus 2, 10. And an atomic, an element with an atomic number of 10 is neon. And the cycle goes on and on until iron is being produced. Iron 56. That's how the alpha ladder process happens. Once again, this is your teacher Dana. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and please click the notification bell for more videos.